All right, 29. A plane flies horizontally at an altitude of 2 kilometers and passes directly over a radar located on the ground. So I'm going to pause right there and say that I have a radar station and 2 kilometers uh, kilometers, sorry, words, two kilom kilometers up. <laughs> I can't talk today, guys, sorry. Uh, there's a plane flying. There we go. All right. So then we're told what when the angle of elevation is 60 degrees, this angle is decreasing at a rate of 30 degrees per minute. How fast is the plane flying at that time? So angle of elevation. Now, angle of elevation has a very specific meaning. So let's complete this triangle right here because it's too tempting. So we have a right triangle. Angle of elevation is measured off the horizontal. So angle of ele elevation is not just measured off the horizontal. It's measured off the horizontal at the ground. So in this, in this scenario, so here is the ground and it goes from the ground up. So the angle of elevation is located here. So the angle you were given is actually outside the obvious triangle, not inside the triangle. Then um, we're told the following. So let's now extract our information here. So theta at a particular moment in time, remember the fact that it's decreasing means it's changing, so it is not appropriate to put 30 here. It's just appropriate to label the variable of where it is because it's actually going to get smaller as the plane keeps flying horizontally. So our data point of 60 degrees is only happening at this one particular moment in time, and we're going to go ahead and put that in radians because all angles need to be put in radians. Then we're told the angle is changing, so this is a related rate, d theta dt is decreasing. So if it's decreasing, that means it's negative 30 degrees per minute. So let's translate this into radians. So this is negative pi over six radians per minute. They want us to find the speed of the plane. So that means I need to assign a variable to this location. So I'm gonna call it x. So the goal of the problem is to find dx dt. We want to find this rate given this location. Now there's sort of two approaches we could take with this problem. We could create another right triangle here because we, we know all of our trig functions based on um, the angle being inside the triangle. We could also use our opposite kind of interior angle rule, we could, all, we could also recognize that theta is here and then use this as our reference angle. So it's really just a matter of preference. So I think it's gonna be easier to just live inside this triangle. So we need to now figure out what is the relationship between theta and x. We gotta come up with a formula. So if we look at our angle, theta, you remember it's gotta be the one inside the triangle. So from this location, two is our opposite side and x is our adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent is tangent. So tangent of theta is two over x. Now, if I solve this equation to kind of eliminate any fractions, because I don't want to do any quotient rules, right? I get x times tangent equals two. Well, when I go to take the derivative, this is going to require a product rule. And if you remember how related rates work, every time you take the derivative of a, something with a variable, you've got to tack on either a you know, d theta dt, a dx dt. That's going to get really messy. So since this is trig, it would be really nice if I could somehow move this over to the other side so I could do simpler derivative rules. So if I divide both sides by tangent, move the tangent over, well, one over tangent is cotangent. So this is the same equation is x equals two cotangent theta. So now it's gonna be much simpler for me to take the derivative of. So the derivative of the left side is just one times dx dt. The derivative on the right side is two times, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared theta times d theta dt. So this worked out quite nice for us. That's what we're looking for. We don't have to do any additional algebra steps. We just need to plug our numbers in and be done with it. 
So dx dt is equal to negative 2 cosecant squared of theta at our moment in time is pi over 3 and d theta dt is negative pi over 6. And the units of this are going to come out to be in the units of x, which are kilometers, and the units of time, which are minutes. Now, you are, a good rule of thumb is, we feel that students should be accountable for the first quadrant of the unit circle. So always kind of know that if any of the angles inside of a trig function here are very famous, well-known first quadrant angles, we would consider this an incomplete answer. So you actually do need to figure out what cosecant of pi over 3 is. Now, I'm not very good with things that aren't sine or cosine. So let's use our knowledge of sine and cosine to figure out what cosecant is. So cosecant is 1 over sine. Sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2, which means sine squared is square root of 3 over 2 squared. This works out to be 3 fourths. So that means cosecant squared of pi over 3 is 4 thirds. You just flip the fraction. So now I'm going to come down here and say negative 2 times 4 thirds times negative pi over 6 kilometers per minute will equal 2 cancels with a 2 in here and we get a 3 so we get 4 negative excuse me or sorry the negative times the negative cancels so this is positive so 4 pi over 9 kilometers per minute And so whenever you have a trig function that is not sine, cosine, or tan, this is a good trick. Just figure out what it is for sine or cosine, use your knowledge of the reciprocal, and so you can appropriately flip your fraction.